As you can see then, the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit uh, is ready and waiting for the first racing action uh, of the day in the Ferrari Challenge UK. Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, 1.2 miles in length, one very different challenge, and then on Sunday, a whole new one when we take to the GP circuit. Uh, so then, uh, the cars are out there uh, on the track at the moment, and uh, we are getting them rolling onto the track at the moment. We've already had qualifying uh, here today, and the drivers are getting themselves ready and waiting. But Jack Werrell alongside me, Adam Weller, uh, we've seen qualifying and we've already seen a hot favorite for today in that qualifying session. We have indeed. So welcome along everybody for round one of the 2024 Ferrari Challenge UK. This morning got underway with a fabulous qualifying session. A lot of the Copa Shell drivers, so some of the potentially less experienced drivers took to the circuit first and really started to get those times up on the board before they were joined then by the Trofeo Pirelli drivers, usually the quicker drivers. We've got reigning champions, defending champions uh, in Trofeo Pirelli and uh, unfortunately, not go for Shell this weekend, but qualifying. What a session that was. We saw Tom Fleming take pole position, and my God, that was one very, very quick lap. Nine tenths clear to the good was Tom Fleming. So we've got lots to look forward to. Round one, uh, race one, very shortly getting underway. And the track's been getting warmer, Adam. It's slowly started to uh, uh, sort of warm up throughout the weekend. So the cars may have slowly started to change their behavior as to how they react to the racing surface. And of course, the more action we've seen throughout the day, the more rubbered in the track gets. That's exactly right. And between the qualifying and the race, there has been running on the circuit, the uh, club challenge element of the weekend, where some of uh, the very newest Ferrari track drivers get their opportunity to get their eye in with a full fat uh, Ferrari 488 Challenge Evo. That's been going on. There have also been some parades and uh, demo sessions out on the circuit as well. Uh, and the temperatures were going up. When we left qualifying, it was getting sunnier and warmer, and, and now we're getting overcast again. So I dare suggest the ambient temperatures are going down. The wind has certainly gone up uh, over the course of the last few moments, but the overall track temp compared to where we were at the start of qualifying has gone up. 20 degrees track temp. Uh, air temp is now at 10. It was at 8 degrees Celsius at the start of qualifying this morning. So we are starting to get up there, but it's still going to be difficult initially to get those Pirelli P0 tyres into their operating window. Yeah, absolutely so. And we've already been treated to some brilliant action this morning, as both uh, yourself and I mentioned, um, Adam, with qualifying. And of course, free practice one, where we saw a lot of drivers potentially getting in the car for their first official session in the Ferrari Challenge UK. And in their uh, Ferrari 488 uh, Evo uh, Challenge car, but down to the grid for the first time here at Brands Hatch, Amanda Stretton. Well, thank you very much. It is, I have to say, delightfully warm compared to what it was this morning. The cars are starting to line up on the grid and you can definitely feel the tension rising. And I'm delighted to say that I am joined today by Giancarlo Fisichella, a Ferrari Formula One driver. You're racing GTs as well. What capacity are you here today? Well, as, a, as ambassador and uh, I am in, um, in a briefing uh, room uh, as an advisor. And uh, I really enjoyed the, the circuit. I did a couple of laps uh, before um, with a 296 GTB and a, it's great circuit. I never race here, uh, fortunately, <laughs> but uh, maybe one day, why not? I was giving you some tips earlier on, just keep turning right, yeah? Did that help? It really helped, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Anytime. Um, but you're also here um, in the, in watching the race, you're doing driver standards, is that right? What do you mean? Maybe not. <laughs> Are you doing the driver standards? You're going to be you're going to be watching all the driving and making your assessment as a driver. Yeah, yeah. I am here to to enjoy the day with all of you, with the, all the drivers, and uh, I'm sure they they will enjoy the race, and uh, it's going to be an interesting race to watch it. And as you say, you got to go out earlier. You've seen just how short this track is and tight. It's busy, and for some of these guys who've never raced before, what would your advice be? Ah, the, it's very important at the beginning to keep the car on the ground <laughs> because it's going to be very difficult uh, the first uh, for the first couple of laps uh, with the tire pressure and uh, uh, they are really cold so the, the grip level was, will be very very low 
Um, and then uh, once they got the feeling, uh, push uh, flat out because you know half an hour is uh, is not uh, it's a sprint race, so they they have to be a little bit aggressive. They do indeed. Well, it'll be interesting to see whether they heed your advice and they actually take it easy once they've uh, got those tyres warmed up and their car's under control. Dave Richardson, you are somewhere down on the grid. Let's see what you found out. Thanks, Amanda. Here we are then, uh, the first race of 2024. Excitement is not the word that you can use, and uh, we're right at the back of the pack here. Steve Dobson, welcome to the Ferrari Challenge. Go well in the race, my friend. Now, somebody who had a really dramatic qualifying is Robert Rees here, who gives us a wave right now. As you can see, the front and the back of his car are slightly different colours to what he started with in his qualifying session uh, this morning. That gives you some idea why he is where he is on the grid. Expect that man to do some overtaking during the course of the race to come. So many new faces here in the Ferrari Challenge UK for 2024. Each and every one of these drivers so, so very welcome. Delighted that they're here, including Mike Dewhurst in that beautiful red, blue, yellow livery across that car. It's magnificent. Now, I was saying that there are so many new faces. Of course, there are some familiar old faces as well. And one that's missing from the car right now, because he knew I was going to speak to him, is Peter Hunter, the rotten chap, has cleared off just when I needed him. And look, this is what Ferrari Challenge is all about, having brilliant fun and enjoying ourselves. Peter Hunter. Paint me like one of your French girls. <laughs> Listen, uh, if I'm honest with you, Peter, yep. and I think if you're honest with us, you're probably not quite as far up the grid as we thought you might be because you've worked so hard during the closed season. Yeah, traffic. Right. I went from P1 to P3 traffic. So you've got some overtaking to do in this race? Oh, just nudging. Good luck to you, Peter Hunter. Thanks. So, <laughs> Amanda, he is one of those characters. And this is what's great about the Ferrari Challenge, because we are littered with great drivers who are great characters as well. And be afraid, be very afraid. Do you know, I think, uh, I think Peter is just loving this, absolutely loving. It is bolstering him up. It is uh, definitely going to his head. Oh, he is a great guy. And as you can see, uh, a couple of uh, competitors from, uh, you can't see, but you will see in a moment, uh, a couple of competitors from last season, you may recall, uh, Stuart Marston and Julian Dye, who have promised me faithfully that they are going to be back on the grid very soon. This is Julian Dye, and uh, we'll catch up with Stuart Marston, I'm sure, two of the big, big competitors from last season, who are going to be uh, rejoining us on the grid here in uh, the uh, Ferrari Challenge UK. Now, Amanda, to your left-hand side, is this wonderful livery across the uh, Gary Redman car. And I know that standing by him is uh, Fulvio Musi, who is his driver coach. And Fulvio's always up for a chat, Amanda. I'm not trying to hint anything here, but look at this. He's already got the headphones off because he wants to speak to Amanda Stretton live on the grid, what he's telling his driver right now. He's terrible, isn't he, Fulvia? He's absolutely terrible. But no, we can tell you're a racing driver because it's cloudy and you've got your sunglasses on. I know, I know. Um, so Gary, uh, Gary Redmond, the comeback. We're very excited. I worked with Gary in 2019 and uh, made a very last minute decision to come back and do a bit of racing. We so nearly grabbed pole position. Um, we, were, we, were, we were gutted, you know, we were really gutted. We didn't quite grab it. And Gary, I'm gonna grab a quick word with you. Um, you've not been doing much since 2019, have you? You've, uh, you've been a bit preoccupied. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I guess uh, well, we all got preoccupied with COVID and then uh, I had a uh, major heart surgery. Well, listen, this is an incredible comeback. Congratulations, P2 in your first race uh, in the class, I think is an absolutely phenomenal result, Dave, don't you think? I think it's absolutely brilliant and it's great to see Gary back in the car again and good to see uh, Fulvio Musi uh, looking after him in terms of uh, driver coaching as well. Now, when you have the blank canvas of a 488 Challenge Evo to work with, you get some absolutely stunning liveries and these two are good examples of that. The Van Gala car, I think, looks stunning in green and this of uh, uh, Pillai, uh, this 
black and gold livery, I think is just absolutely awesome. Sorry, I just get so excited about these cars. Interesting. It would be really interesting to have some sort of poll as to what livery people like the best. That's a very good idea. You're full of good ideas, Amanda Stretton. You're marvellous. Um, returning face is uh, John Dillon. And uh, John is uh, one of those evergreen talents in the uh, Ferrari Challenge, does an awful lot of racing. And I'm going to grab just a very quick word with John now. Uh, John, please tell me 2024 is the year that you are not the bridesmaid, you're going to become the bride. You're owed some success, friend. Definitely. Honeymoon period is over, Dave. I'm going for it. And put it this way, I'm going to get onto the back of Tom and try and get through. Turn one. Good luck to you, John Dillon, and thanks for talking to us. Um, he's a driver that has promised so much, and it's going to come good for him. I'm sure of that, Amanda. There have definitely been moments where he's really got it all together, haven't there? No, but I... it's so hard. It is so hard, particularly with these guys where they're not racing week in, week out, to actually keep the momentum going. Whoa. But I think this is where we're going to see... Uh, <laughs> we're going to see fireworks a little bit later on, because, of course, I mean, listen, our returning champion, Andrew Morrow, he's got a point to prove, and I think he wasn't expecting to be out-qualified by such a margin, 0.9 of a second. It was so, so close. And, of course, you have got, as you alluded, such a heavyweight, talented front row here. Andrew Morrow, 2023 champion, up against Tom Fleming, uh, 2023 Ferrari Challenge Europe World Final winner. I had two young whippersnappers, and I feel, being as old as I am, I can say that. I can say that. Uh, these guys mean business. Uh, we already know uh, just how good a drivers they are, absolutely pitched together like this. I'm going to grab a quick word with Tom. Maybe you grab a quick word with Andrew Morrow. Right, and after you. Me being me, I think it should be ladies go first, you know, Amanda. So you get in there and have a word with Andrew Morrow. Right. Andrew, how are you feeling? Are you all right to talk for a moment? Yeah, all's good. All good. Right. You're on the outside going into paddock. I personally think this might be a bit of an advantage, but what do you think? Yeah, I suppose we're in the dirty part of the track. Um, up here, outside in the paddock hill bend is always going to be brave, so hopefully we'll get away good at the start and just settle into the race and do no silly moves. Now, that was a bit of a margin in qualifying, 0.9 of a second. Um, what's going to be, I mean, what do you think it's going to be in the race? Because, of course, now you're starting alongside one another. Um, are you just going to sort of sit on his tail and see what happens, or what's the strategy? Yeah, look, it's a long race. Anything can happen in half an hour. Just get away at the start, all being well, be able to sit behind him and then build from there. Well, listen, good luck. The countdown is, uh, is coming. Good luck. Thank you. Right, we have got about 60 seconds with Tom Fleming, a Ferrari world champion here on the grid at Brands Hatch. Tom, pole position. Surely you're just going to convert it into P1 at the end. Well, that's not necessarily always the case. You never know what can happen in a, in a challenge race. It's always full of entertainment. And uh, yeah, but I look forward to get started. Way you go, Tom. Thank you for talking to us. And uh, from Amanda and I, then, that's it from the grid. Up to the Tower of Power, then. Here comes race one with Adam and with Jack. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Amanda. Yeah, great to hear from the drivers. Top to bottom of the grid as well. And there's some varying strategies as well, Adam, because, of course, if you're on the outside, as Andrew Morrow alluded to, you're on the dirty side of the grid, but it also means as soon as you head into turn one, you can almost carry that momentum from the higher side of the race circuit and uh, try and turn a good start into an even better first lap and uh, there's so many different things that the drivers have got to think about on their first lap but of course now is it's all down to them all of that practice all of that data that they've collected and their qualifying it almost counts for nil apart from this qualifying position everything from here on out is on them keeping the car on the road getting the tires and the pressures exactly where they need to be and then they can push forward Sometimes at the end of lap one, whether it's for better or worse, the race feels like something of a clean slate versus where you were in qualifying if you have a particularly good or particularly bad start in the race. Uh, as you said, outside of Paddock Hill Bend, of course, if you can hold it around the outside of Paddock Hill and Druids, you can then convert it to the inside line for Graham Hill Bend, the third corner and third braking zone of the lap. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting half hour plus one lap of racing. Yeah, absolutely so. We've got so much to look forward to. This is 
is this is going to set up the rest of the 2024 championship. This is how they will line up. Thomas Fleming lines up on pole position after a 46.469 posted. Nine tenths clear of Andrew Morrow alongside. Row two of the grid is made up of John Dillon and Gilbert Yates, car number 61 and car number 11. Moving on to row three of the grid, we've got Haimandra Palai. He has Pranav Vangala for company on row three. Row four is made up of our Copa Shell pole sitter, Darren Howell. He has Gary Redman alongside car five and car number 22. On row five of the grid, we've got Peter Hunter and Mike Dewhurst. That rounds out your top 10 starters and starting in 11th and 12th we've got Stephen Dobson and Robert Reese. it's great to see that they've got that car um, exactly how it needs to be to enter this race and AF course have done a brilliant job Ferrari have done a brilliant job and it's brilliant to see just about a full grid of Ferrari Challenge cars yeah always great uh, when you get to see that happen uh, the the team here at Ferrari Challenge UK are always incredibly keen on making sure everyone gets their opportunity to race um, even bringing out a spare car if that's what's needed uh, and uh, that is the key thing making sure that all of our competitors all of our customers get to come out and go racing and we will be doing just that here at the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit of course they've all got to remember to peel off at Surtees for the GP loop uh, tomorrow uh, and it is it's a unique situation isn't it yeah, absolutely so, because um, they've got to put all that work into the Grand Prix loop tomorrow as well, a bit more practice and get their setup dialed in for what is quite a, a different circuit. The complexity changes, the elevation changes, the speed changes, absolutely everything like that. So they've really got to uh, nail today to put them in the best spot tomorrow. The tyres are getting up to temperature, the brakes are getting up to temperature, and we're about to go racing for the first time in the 2024 season of Ferrari Challenge UK. The red lights are on, it's all eyes on Tom Fleming and Andrew Morrow, who will get the best start working their way along the Brabham Strait. They will be keeping an eye on the red light, which will go out in just a few moments time. So Tom Fleming from pole position. Uh, John Dillon looks to already uh, capitalize on what was going to be a good start, but we go racing for the first time in 2024 for Ferrari Challenge UK. John Dillon looking to the inside of Andrew Morrow, but Tom Fleming is through and away. The top two already starting to build a margin. John Dillon up into third place. And I think sat there in second place or in fourth place is Gilbert Yates. He may have just picked up a place. Uh, that's uh, Pillai in fourth position. The Malaysian racer uh, has just now snuck through. So there was a bit of jumbling going on there just outside the top three. Yates, I think, briefly had his nose ahead in fourth. As you said, fighting the car in sixth position there. Van Gala just getting onto the curbs on the exit of Graham Hill Bend as well. Got to be careful on these cold tyres. It will take a couple of laps to get them up to temperature. And then once they're up to temp, they will give optimal performance. Yeah, Tom Fleming doing everything he needs to do on that first lap. He's built a margin nice and early. So over the line, he takes the first lap in the book of 49.624. 1.1 seconds clear of Andrew Morrow already. Uh, yeah, car number 19, that's uh, Hamandra Pillai. He did work his way up into fourth place. Gilbert Yates losing a place on the first, la first lap. Um, as we heard from uh, Dave down on the grid, Robert Rees, keep an eye on him. He's up two places on the first lap alone. He's inside the top 10, trying to make that ninth place, desperately trying to open the door on the inside. That's car number 22 of Gary Redmond, just trying to find a little bit of room. It doesn't quite work for him, but Robert Rees, he's on a mission. Tom Fleming still leading the way. Darren Howell is still your leader then in Copa Shell running seventh overall where he started in this race and he's being pursued exclusively by drivers with experience here. You've got Hunter, of course, who raced last year. You've got Redman who's recovering uh, or re returning to the series uh, after joining us in 2019. And then behind him is Reese in the number eight car. So that's three drivers all with prior racing experience here in Ferrari Challenge UK all pursuing Howell on his series debut. Darren Howell making a big impact on his first ever race appearance. Yeah, absolutely so. What a way to start a season. But having to go defensive already, uh, that is Gary Redman. He knows Robert Reese is on his way. He's looking around the outside at Drew. It can't quite get the car off the corner as quickly as he would like. The door slightly opens ajar on the run in towards Graham Hill Bend. He can't quite find the room there. On the Cooper Strait, we will go uh, once again with Robert Reese. He's desperately trying to pick up a couple more places. And what that will be, that will be onto the provisional uh, Copa Shell podium. He wants to try and get third place in class and then potentially uh, work his way onto the coattails of Conor number 82 of Peter Hunter. But Tom Fleming back over the line. Fastest lap of the race of 47.602. Andrew Morrow still giving chase. One and a half seconds back now. John Dillon having got into third place. He's only, what, one and a half seconds away from Andrew Morrow. And don't really rule him out as of yet. I'm Andrew Pillai. He picked up fourth place on the opening lap. He's not really lapping that far away from John Dillon. We could see this really close up. Absolutely could. Difficult, though, to take our eyes off this wonderful Copa Shell battle at the moment. Robert Rees 
just studying Redman here as they go towards Graham Hill once again. Of course, for Andrew Morrow, following Tom Fleming, that's a bit of a, a, a almost like a, a tape study, you might call it, in, in other sports where you just take a look at what someone else has been doing. He's getting to follow in the wheel tracks of last year's Ferrari Challenge World Champion. He's setting pace equivalent to what everyone else was doing in qualifying within the race at the moment. Uh, and Andrew Morrow is doing the full season out in Europe this year. Uh, so he's getting a great opportunity to compare himself to the best Ferrari Challenge driver in the world right now. Yeah, absolutely. Darren Howell's still leading the way in Copa Shell. Of course, he's got Charles Rainford as his driver coach for this weekend. Charles Rainford has driven uh, a multitude of sort of GT machinery um, as well. So really has the support uh, of Charles this weekend and he's converting that support into what is a very healthy lead at the moment. One second clear of um, Peter Hunter as we speak. Tom Fleming through the final corner. That lead gap's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Last time through a 47.493, the fastest lap of the race. What can he do as he breaks the beam this time? I don't think it'll be much quicker. No, it isn't 47.7. However, that was still two and a half tenths quicker than Andrew Morrow. So the lead gap is out to two and a half seconds now for Tom Fleming. He's really showing what he's worth at the moment and doing everything he needs to do to prove to Ferrari he is the man you want in your car. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be back here in a fortnight racing a GT3 spec Ferrari 296. Uh, looking at the gap from first to last, it's 18 seconds already with uh, less than five minutes complete. Lap traffic is definitely going to be a factor for our front-running Trofeo Pirelli drivers by the end of this race. And, of course, these Copa Shell drivers have their own championship to consider, their own races, their own battles going on. It's going to be quite a test here for Fleming for Morrow uh, to pick their way through the field. Now, I'm not sure how much experience Andrew Morrow has of that, but I know that Tom Fleming has done some multi-class racing, so he might have a little bit more of a deft hand or at least a bit more experience to lean on when it comes to making his way through tra traffic if and when they close in on the rear of the field. Yeah, absolutely. Robert Rees this time so late on the brakes, almost dives his way up the inside of Peter Hunter in towards turn one. Couldn't make it work. Tom Fleming still just extending that lead margin, almost up to 2.9 seconds Robert Rees has another look on the run up towards Druids can't quite edge the door open all the way around the outside a dab of the brakes just to get the nose chipped in once again and just can't quite get that car alongside he is trying absolutely everything to earn some redemption from this morning and work his way into the top three of Copa Shell as they broke the beam over the line two tenths of a second was the margin between uh, third and fourth in Copa Shell of course still leading the race is Tom Fleming Andrew Morrow only what 2.8 seconds back so it was previously extending quite a lot that lead margin not as much as we've seen so far so we'll just wait and see as to what Tom Fleming can do as he approaches that traffic of course you can do all the practice you want trying to approach some traffic but different drivers do different things and of course the last thing you want to do is show up to the rear of the field as the leader with spent tires as well you might have to go around the outside you might have to make your own line and if you try and do that on a worn set of tires that you've put massive heat cycles through that will cause you problems i tell you what's causing problems at the moment it isn't tires it's hunter at the moment for how in the number five car uh hunt peter hunter really is <laughs> challenging him at the moment look to the inside to the outside any which way he could he's a showman uh off track he's also a bit of a showman on the circuit as well if he gets half an opportunity here at the copa shell lead you can be sure he's going to take it. Absolutely. So Darren Howell still leading the way in Copa Shell. Peter Hunter is there or thereabouts. Robert Rees again just trying to size up a move up the inside of uh, Gary Redman. Late on the brakes, dives his way up the inside towards Paddock Hill Bend. Position made. Brilliant move. Up into third place now is Robert Rees. He was so committed on the brakes, he just had to make that move work. And straight away back on the attack. He doesn't have to worry about defending. He's so, so confident. He's now looking to try and work his way through and past. That'll be car number 82 of Peter Hunter, who's since up until this point, he's just been focusing on uh, Copa Shell leader Darren Howell. And that's the thing, isn't it? When you know that someone who started at the back has now scythed their way through the order and is chasing you down, that puts more and more emphasis on A, wanting to get past the car ahead of you, but B, suddenly you want to look a bit more at the mirrors and see what's going on in your rear view. Suddenly, this doesn't go from straight battling, it goes into a bit of a juggle. Yeah, and getting closer and closer and closer 
is Tom Fleming. He will just be um, chipping away at that lead margin, pull it, or pulling away um, from Andrew Morrow. But lap traffic, 22 minutes to go. It is a very, very real possibility that he's got to try and overcome uh, throughout this race. Peter Hunter still starting to feel uh, that pressure from Robert Rees. He just had a small look up the inside. And again, this is going back to what you alluded to earlier, um, just studying that driver. Where are they slightly earlier on the brakes? Where don't they get the best run out of a corner? And now we're seeing it along the Cooper Straight. Robert Rees, a small look on the inside, on the run up towards Surtees. Again, he's just filling those mirrors, trying to force that mistake. Get a replay here uh, of a spin for uh, Van Gala. So Van Gala having a moment there uh, going through Surtees. I think rejoined without losing a position. Side by side, meanwhile, as Redmond and Hunter are side by side. So Hunter has lost out to Reese, and now he's under fire from Gary Redmond. Gary Redmond moves up to third in the class then. Peter Hunter must have uh, lost out there to Reese, and then uh, lost out in quick succession as well to the third place man. Dewhurst dives to the inside as well for fifth in Copa Shell. It looked like the lead could be under threat as well. Here comes Reese. Yeah, it's getting closer and closer and closer in Copa Shell at the moment. Robert Reese having worked his way up into what is now second place in that class. I don't know whether it was a small mistake from Peter Hunter, whatever's happened. It's dropped him right the way out of those provisional podium places. But now it's all eyes on our Copa Shell leader, Darren Howell. He's got Robert Reese behind him, and Robert has been on a mission throughout this race. Tom Fleming's lead margin, 5.2 seconds now. Andrew Morrow uh, still sat there in second place. John Dillon in third, but Robert Reese, he is on a mission. He wants that lead. The entirety of Copa Shell, all six cars in the class, are currently split by less than three seconds. What a fight this is. And to the inside for the class lead from the rear of the field comes Reese. Robert Reese has dispatched everybody in the first 10 minutes of the race and now begins the not insignificant task of trying to build a lead. But uh, he looks very confident, and that says a lot about the driver as well. If you can be confident after uh, the car had to be worked on between sessions, that's uh, a good sign of racing driver mentality. Yeah, absolutely so. He's clearly got himself in a very good headspace and well prepared for the first race of the season, despite the small hiccup from this morning and already into the lead of Copa Shell. That lead margin, we said he's got to try and open it up. What is it? Seven tenths of a second between Robert Rees and Darren Howell. He's done everything he needs to do since taking taking the lead of Copa Shell. Tom Fleming in the lead of the race, continuing to lap quicker than Andrew Morrow at the moment. But what that will be doing, it will be taking chunks out of his uh, Pirelli tyres. He will be working them just that little bit harder. They will more than last the race. But the slight bit of fall off that Tom Fleming will feel, that could give an opportunity to Andrew Morrow to try and catch up, especially with that traffic. That's still going to be, I think, a, a card that will be played in this race. And if he could see the pictures that we see now of the entire Copa Shell field together, all scrapping with each other, he would be feeling a bit hot under the collar and going, oh, goodness me, no. Uh, we do have our first track limits penalty, by the looks of it, belonging to Dewhurst in the 74 car. Uh, so Mike Dewhurst getting a, a little bit of a, a potential uh, ramification there for it, using a bit too much of the circuit. And that is something they have to be wary of as well across the race distance. Five second penalty uh, it is for him. Uh, now, Mike has actually driven here before. He's never raced before this weekend, but he is the proud owner of a 1992 Formula One car, Ferrari engine Dallara. And uh, he has demoed it here at Brands before, but he assures me absolutely no correlation between demoing an F1 car versus racing a Ferrari GT machine. No, I'm sure uh, Mike Dewhurst uh, may have uh, a bit of earache because Ed Bridal will not be happy with a track limits penalty. Um, only, what, 10 minutes into the first round or the first race of the season. Tom Fleming, 6.8 seconds, that lead margin now. The only driver to be lapping in the 47s consistently um, as well. We know he's got the pace for the 46s. He has to manage this race pace. Robert Rees now under fire from Darren Howell. He wants that lead back. A small look to the inside, but slightly earlier on the brakes was Darren Howell. That drops him back into the clutches of Gary Redman. Over the line, once again, we see car number 19. That is uh, Haimandra Pillai. And in terms of Trofeo Pirelli, it really has started to open up. The closest gap we've got is between Gilbert Yates and um, Haimandra Pillai. So they're, what, 1.2 seconds apart. All it takes is one small mistake. It's just a slight locked brake, or you just run slightly wide onto a kerb, unsettles the car, and we see a brilliant battle once again. 
Yeah, absolutely right. And you're going to see a lot of that over the course of the race, I think. The, uh, the pendulum shifting uh, from car to car. You can just make slight errors, lose a bit of time, build the gap back up. Uh, then the guy behind you has a mistake, you think you're home free, and it just kind of seesaws like that sometimes. There's actually no room for slip-ups in Copa Shell, but there has been one down at Druids. Peter Hunter has just had a spin at Druids Bend. That might be what we're about to get a look at. Yeah, so on the brakes, on the run-up towards Druids, was it assisted? Yes, it was. A big dive up the inside there. That was from Mike Dewhurst. Of course, he will be trying to overcome that penalty as best he can. A bit of damage limitation from him. Unfortunately, a late move up the inside just spun Peter Hunter through 180 degrees. He gets the car back going again. They really are sturdy machines, and they can handle uh, knocks like that very, very well. Um, indeed, car number 19 of uh, Hymandra Pillai. He's still out there and running, but trying to run away from Gilbert Yates at the moment. The gap has come out very slightly up to 1.6 seconds. He's doing what he needs to at the moment, but of course his main target will be trying to get back onto the coattails of John Dillon in third. Eli there just grazing the gravel and the grass out of Clark Curve and Clearways. That was a little bit of a fine margin. Meanwhile, our race leader Tom Fleming is now on the rear of the Copa Shell battles. So he's there with them now. He's going to have to do some circumnavigating, I think, of the outer remits of the Brands Hatch tarmac uh, to try and find some track space. Because, yes, there will be blue flags. Yes, I'm sure the Copa Shell drivers know they have to obey them but they've got their own fights to contend with. Yeah, they do. Up the inside of Peter Hunter goes Tom Fleming. So that's the first couple of cars uh, ticked past. He's also got to try and work his way through and past Stephen Dobson, which I think he has now done. Over the line he will go, and yes, he has got by Stephen Dobson. So that's two cars that he's managed to dispatch already. The next car for him will be Mike Dewhurst, and then he's got a bit of breathing room. Then he can relax, recompose, and try and fight his way onto the coattails of the uh, rest of the Copa Shell class. Of course, whatever happened to Dobson on the previous lap, Peter Hunter has worked his way back through and past, recovering from a spin. He's got back in that zone, and he's already back on the coattails of Mike Dewhurst. Yes, the two that collided a matter of, what, three laps ago? They're now going side by side through Surtees, and Dewhurst actually, I think, letting there Peter Hunter through, maybe uh, a little bit of uh, redressing, as they would call it in supercars racing out in Australia, uh, as Dewhurst drops back. Uh, it seems like he's uh, just struggling a little bit at the moment. Yeah, that does beg the question. I think the front splitter has uh, come very slightly astray from the front of his car but in terms of uh, Tom Fleming the lead gap 8.2 seconds he's not slowed down he's still doing 48 seconds lap times through traffic he's doing absolutely everything he needs to do there is a drive-through penalty it is for the man you think it would be for Mike Dewhurst drive-through penalty for causing a collision so into the pit lane and you rumble your way down at 60 kilometers an hour before you can return to the circuit that will more or less put a, uh, a pin in the rest of his uh, racing aspirations for or the result aspirations that he wants in this race but Tom Fleming what a performance it has been so far somebody I would quite like to keep an eye on is indeed Mahendra Pillai he's only half a second away from John Dillon yeah that battle for third place is uh, an interesting one on multiple fronts we know that Tom Fleming is only doing this weekend uh, Morrow, we're not sure if he'll be doing the full season or not in Challenge UK. He says, well, I'm only doing this one for now, but, um, in racing driver terms, but means I could be talked into doing more. Uh, so uh, John Dillon is actually the first of the confirmed full season competitors here, therefore, which means this could end up being very important at the tail end of the season once all things are said and done. And look at the rate of closure from Pillai over the last few laps. The Malaysian racer has really got his eye in now and is setting in sights on, on his sights on John Dillon, a man who has the better part of 15 years of top-line GT experience to his name. Yeah, John Dillon really knows how to handle some GT machinery, but at the moment he's under pressure from Hymandra Pillai. A small look to the inside on the run out of Clark Curve, but that slightly tighter line displayed from Hymandra will just slightly compromise his straight line speed. He's back in the aerodynamic assistance. He's closing and closing and closing on John Dillon. Later on the brakes, the wider line in. We could see a brilliant run on the way through, and unfortunately we have had a car off at Paddock Hill Bend, so hopefully that can all get uh, squared away um, fairly shortly as well. But I'm Andrew Pillai, he's really starting to close up onto the coattails of John Dillon. Yeah, we've had a car off, that's Dobson, who's had a moment at Paddock Hill Bend. 
And we'll see how that is dealt with. Just see at the back of shot there. Uh, but John Dillon continuing to defend this third place. Pillai and Yates as we go to safety car conditions. Unsurprisingly, 12 minutes and 20 seconds of the race left to go. And we are under safety car. I think we may well be uh, getting a... Uh, a interesting resumption of this race if we do get to do so because of course Fleming's lead that he's just built over the last 20 minutes yeah. will be gone and of course if he's pushed extra hard to try and extend that lead the his Pirelli P0 tires while still in good condition might not be quite as good as Andrew Morrow's and all will be revealed the fabulous Brands Hatch Marshals and uh, Brands Hatch Circuit staff immediately um, to the help of car number 74, that being Stephen Dobson, so that is uh, uh, being dealt with. But in terms of Tom Fleming, like you say, that lead margin is going to result to absolutely nil. We've got the um, glorious Ferrari 296 safety car. Uh, it has, uh, they have indeed picked up uh, what I believe is our race leader. Yes, it is of Tom Fleming. And the thing is, for now, does that mean the lapped cars will have that opportunity just to work their way through and past the safety car, get themselves back on the lead lap and onto the tail of the train? If not, Andrew Morrow's got a bit of work to do because he's got some lapped cars separating him and Tom Fleming. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh, if a safety car is going to fall for a race leader, you want it to be in that moment when you're carving your way through the traffic. Ergo, the guy behind you, might have a couple of cars in the way of him when the race resumes. That's exactly the situation that Fleming finds himself in right now. Uh, so Tom Fleming leads the way now by 3.6 seconds, but the important bit of information is he leads by two other Ferrari 488 Challenge Evos over Morrow in second place. Then it's Dylan in third, Pillai and Yates rounding out your top five in your Trofeo Pirelli top contenders. It's also a great opportunity, this, for Pranav Van Gala, uh, who had his uh, moment earlier on, and he now gets to rejoin that podium contenders scrap as well. And uh, we saw him uh, showing some very impressive pace earlier on in the qualifying session. I dare suggest with that second chance, as it were, with this safety car period, uh, if and when we do get this race resumed, uh, I think you'll take that with both hands. Yes, absolutely. So if he can just work his way onto the coattails of those cars up the road, which naturally will happen under the safety car, I don't think he's got a car between himself and Gilbert Yates. No, he doesn't. So immediately on the restart, it means that Pranav Van Gala, of course, his 2024 driver coach, is Jake Hill. His driver coach has been Jake Hill for the past 10 years so having that support having that knowledge um, behind him may just be the key required to unlock the door on those cars up the road so the safety car queue coming over the line once again the clock continues to tick down we're at nine and a half minutes remaining at the moment the cleanup operation still uh, going on in terms of Mike Dewhurst I, I believe the drive-through penalty has been served. Yes, it has. It was uh, 23 seconds from pit in to pit out uh, for Mike Dewhurst. So drive-through penalty um, served, albeit he will now be back on the pack and can potentially try and carve his way back through. Yes, that's, uh, that's going to be interesting in its own right, isn't it? The good news is that we can see here uh, Dobson walking away from that incident. Uh, uh, so he is walking on his own two feet. I'm sure he'll get uh, some precautionary checks, but it is uh, great to see uh, that he is A-OK -okay and on his own two feet uh, after quite a, or clearly, quite a major incident. Very, very well safety at the top of the list and it's great to see that Dobson is out of the car we have got uh, eight and a half minutes of the race remaining to put it into perspective under safety car uh, pace Tom Fleming has got two cars between himself and Andrew Morrow um, so well that's 3.9 seconds but of course once the safety car peels in it's all eyes Tom Fleming he goes when it when he wants he, he will lead the pack um, he will lead the pack up, and we've had a spinner under safety car as well. That's Pranav Van Gala that's spun once again at uh, Clark Curve. He won't be able to work into that previous position that he was in the safety car queue. He has to join the back of the safety car queue. So that has more or less, again, just deflated his race aspirations, and he's come into the pit lane. So whatever's going on with Pranav Van Gala, I'm sure um, he's not 100% satisfied with that one. But in terms of uh, Tom Fleming, 
if I were Tom, I would go as soon as soon as the safety car peels in, foot to the floor and disappear, because that means Andrew Morrow has to wait till the start line before he can even think about overtaking anybody. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, that is the optimum strategy there. Of course, we, we talk of, uh, of this situation with the two cars between them. Uh, the one driver that's really been benefited here is the number five car that we see on screen at the very back of the field and now leading Copper Shell by almost a lap uh, is Darren Howell. Uh, so the battle for second in the class is now, well, sandwiched between the top two overall in the race between Fleming and Morrow. And uh, yeah, that's just going to be a huge advantage then for, uh, for, for Howell uh, as the race resumes. And, and critically, of course, that means that uh, Redman and Hunter can uh, kind of focus on dueling it out for second in class as well. Yeah, it's uh, really gone the way of Darren Howell, hasn't it? Presumably that was the next car that Tom Fleming would have approached, but the safety car had to pick out the leader, and it did. Darren Howell had already worked his way through the past, so right on the tail end of the order, and the chequered flag is going to fall early. So over the line underneath safety car, Tom Fleming takes the first win of the season. Maybe not quite the way he would have liked to do it, but Tom Fleming, he more than deserves it after a brilliant free practice, a brilliant qualifying, and from what we saw, his green flag race pace was so so quick Andrew Morrow will cross the line to finish in second place John Dillon rounds out your podium that's what he will have wanted kick off the year right pick up some silverware and now he's got a good base to work from tomorrow and it's he's unlocked a bit of pace and he's shown he can be very very quick indeed we already knew that but I think this will just be what he needs to motivate him through the weekend it was um, uh, Heimandra Pillai that ended up crossing the line in fourth Gilbert Yates in fifth and it does mean Robert Reese. What a performance in Copa Shell. He went from the back of the grid to take the winning class. Yes, exactly right. Reese winning in Copa Shell then just ahead of Howell. I did get that mixed up a little bit earlier on. My apologies for that. Uh, but yes, Reese, your winner then in Copa Shell. And uh, we'll be delighted to go from uh, back to front within the class there in that race. And uh, yeah, the number eight car will be on the top step in Copa Shell, but Tom Fleming in the 73 machine uh, starting his 2024 in the best way possible in familiar turf, the Ferrari 488 Challenge Evo. He's going to do some GT3 racing this year. That's his primary program, but no one, I think, on the face of the earth uh, is quite blow for blow with Tom Fleming in a Ferrari Challenge car at the moment. Oh, he's so, so quick and just jumped straight into uh, the Ferrari Challenge car and knew exactly what he had to do and executed it perfectly. The sun's come out, so if we had another race today, maybe something that we've got to think about. But tomorrow, effectively, the only thing that they can carry from today is the car and what they've done in Sector 1 because it all gets thrown back up in the air again. Tomorrow we're on the Grand Prix layout, so uh, where today you work your way through Surtees, McLaren, Clearways, and back towards the line, you turn an even tighter left at Surtees, and it's all the way along Pilgrim's Drop, up the rise, down the fall, and then up the rise once again towards Hawthorne Bend, an incredibly quick right-hander, along the Derek Minter straight into the blind rides at uh, Westfield Bend before you're down the hill, plenty of undulation change through Dingle Dell, uh, Dingle Dell, and then the even blinder right at Sheen's Curve. Let's see what they can do there tomorrow. Sterling's place the car on the inside, use your camber all the way along clearways before you then arrive back at Clark Curve and on towards the start to finish straight, the Brabham straight. Um, but let's see what they can do about tomorrow because you may see that Tom Fleming, whilst he's quick on a shorter layout, what can Andrew Morrow do? Yes, uh, in the case of Tom Fleming, as he said earlier on to Amanda Stretton after qualifying, first laps of Brands Hatch. Uh, tomorrow it will be his first laps of the GP circuit and that is a venue that has its own unique challenges to say the least. You just talked us through the lap. Uh, lots of uh, great overtaking opportunities on that track as well. Um, but one of the fastest, most flowing circuits in the UK is the GP layout of Brands Hatch. And it's going to be such a treat for everybody uh, when we go racing again on the Sunday. But for Tom Fleming, uh, he will now be in the familiar position of getting ready to receive a big trophy at the top of a Ferrari Challenge podium. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he, Tom? Uh, definitely a star of the future and has, I'm sure, plenty of success uh, waiting for him. Andrew Morrow picking up second place. Of course, the defending champion, but he's not going to argue with second place because he's picked up some good points. That's exactly what he would want to start his 2024 Ferrari Challenge UK campaign. But he may work his way uh, back over to Ferrari Challenge Europe, as you mentioned earlier on. 
Yeah, that's his, uh, currently his full season plan is to do the European Championship, but uh, he seems to currently be thinking partial programme for UK, but uh, if he comes out of this with a, a theoretical championship lead, accounting for the fact that Tom Fleming uh, isn't doing the full season of Ferrari Challenge UK, he, he may yet be swayed. It, it's difficult to leave a championship defence on the table. Yeah, you will want to return and you will want to do everything you can to pick up a back-to-back -back championship. So all eyes on Andrew Morrow. Tom Fleming has a bit of a bit of pressure, but he knows he's got the pace. But again, it's tomorrow. He's got to do all that learning again. The only thing he can carry over is Sector 1. He's got to learn um, all his way through Sector 2 and 3 here at Brands Hatch. Tom Fleming took the win over the line after 26 laps. Andrew Morrow uh, finished in second place. And John Dillon rounds out your overall and your Trofeo Pirelli uh, podium. A mantra pillar finishes in fourth place. Gilbert Yates rounds out your top five. Then it is Robert Rees, the Copa Shell uh, race winner here at Brands Hatch on the Indy layout. Darren Howell finishes in seventh. Gary Redman crossed the line. Uh, eighth overall, third in Copa Shell. Then it's Peter Hunter and Mike Dewhurst. Following on from there, finishing in 11th place was Pranav Van Gala and Stephen Dobson, unfortunately, um, finishing in 12th place. Not quite the end he would like. Down in the pit lane, I believe we've got Amanda. So, Amanda, down to you. Thank you very much. Well, I am here with uh, Robert Rees, the winner of Copper Shell. You are a happy man. I am a very, very happy man. And I thank everybody, the team, for getting me back out to the race after this morning's qualifying. So I'm so grateful. And, and it's the best result that I could have had. I mean, you, you qualified sixth in the class. Obviously, disappoint, disappointment there. What went wrong? Oh, we had a disastrous qualifying and uh, we, it's just... Too much. To absolutely, start. absolutely. But but we made up for it in the race, and, and that's what matters. And I have to say, all of the passing that you did, you looked assertive. I mean, you didn't let off. The moment you were past one car, you were straight onto the tail of the next. Absolutely, and that's what we needed to do to get to the front. We had to get there. Sometimes these races just hang together. Where does this put you for tomorrow? Oh, in a great frame of mind, and I'm really looking forward to the Grand Prix circuit. Right. Well, you can't celebrate tonight. Early night. It is indeed. Yeah. Absolutely, and we'll celebrate tomorrow. Great stuff. Congratulations. Well done. That is the winner of the Copper Shell. One very happy Robert Reese. Great to hear from Robert, Ray, uh, Robert Rees. Let's just have a look at how that race all played out. Brilliant start from Tom Fleming. And in terms of John Dillon, he immediately held on to that third place and wanted to just stay on the coattails of Andrew Morrow and Tom Fleming. The lead gap extended. However, it was all eyes Copa Shell. Robert Rees on his charge through the order gave absolutely everything. Looked around the outside of Gary Redman on the run through Druid's corner. Couldn't quite work his way through and passed on that occasion, but immediately jumped his way through the order and on towards the class leader. At the time, it was Darren Howe. That didn't last long, did it? Robert Rees immediately on the attack, worked his way through and passed into the Copa Shell lead, had to do a bit of defending because Darren Howell wasn't going to let him get off that easily. But Robert Rees just had enough towards the latter stages of the race. We saw a bit of contact further back. That was between the 78 of Mike Dewhurst. Spinning through 180 degrees was Peter Hunter. Eventually, penalties played out, but pushing so, so hard to try and work his way up through the order was Haimandra Pillai. He was currently... Uh, at that time in fourth place. That's eventually where he crossed the line. The safety car came out due to um, an off-track excursion uh, for Dobson. And eventually the checkered flag fell with the field behind the safety car and Tom Fleming, what a start to his 2024 campaign. Ended up taking the win after showcasing some fabulous pace. He takes pole position. He takes the fastest lap of the race and the, uh, the race win as well. So max points for Tom Fleming, Adam. That just means he's going to be in the perfect position to attack the rest of the season if he so wishes to return. 18 points. He's walking away out of race one. We've still got race two tomorrow and plenty more points up for grabs. Yes, absolutely. The season is young, but the room for errors, the room to make slip-ups is minimal. And of course, in the Copa Shell standings, it will be Reese getting that most brilliant start of all. We've already heard from him down there. He will have the full quota of points from the Copa Shell category. And I think Copa Shell this year is really uh, quite an open field. Looking at the names there, looking at the... Uh, 
all-encompassing battle we had between the six of them at one point. Six cars split by three seconds. I think this order that you see on screen, Robert Reese leading uh, by three points in the standings over Howell and Redman. Uh, I think that's going to shuffle a lot over the course of the next few rounds. Uh, meanwhile, down in the pit lane, I understand that Amanda Stretton has another interview. I do indeed. It is, of course, our overall race winner, Tom Fleming. Tom, you made that look very easy indeed. Almost from the first corner, you just knew exactly what you had to do. Well, I can assure you, it's a, um, it's a lot harder than it looks. You know, even the, you know, the guys in here are pretty quick. So, you know, staying on top of the pace whilst also managing the tyres and everything is, uh, is quite difficult. Um, but we could, you know, really smash out uh, some really consistent laps. Had a really good start and got a good, good gap, which meant, you know, we had the track position, which was super key. And then from then on, I just managed my race really well. Uh, Andrew was nipping at my heels for quite a bit. So, you know, he's done very, very well. And uh, yeah, and then unfortunately, you know, the race was cut a little bit short with the guy who had the accident, Steve, I believe. So I hope he's okay. But yeah, he seemed okay. Um, but yeah, happy everyone's at least had a bit of fun, some worse than others. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the result. It just goes to show, doesn't it? He went off at Paddock. In fact, I was talking to Giancarlo Fisichella on the grid before the race, which you wouldn't have heard, but he was saying how important it is to actually bring your tyres in here. Paddock is one of those tricky corners. If you have your entry wrong, it just pulls you out into the gravel, um, particularly if you've got cold tyres. I know he didn't later in the race, but it is a tricky circuit, isn't it? Well, you know, lap one is always the sketchiest part of the race, and this first corner is you know, really deadly. So um, going into the first corner, I'm obviously on the inside line, not the ideal racing line going in. I've got a load of marbles on my tyres, and I get into ABS quite a bit, and the car moves about, and I'm thinking, am I going to make the corner, am I not? And uh, fortunately, I did make the corner covered up the switchback from Andrew Morrow, defended into Hairpin too, and uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> got the job done. Well, listen, many congratulations. I'm sure this is going to stand you in very good stead for tomorrow. Can't wait to see what you pull out of the hat there. But uh, I think we have a podium coming up any moment now. OK, so we are standing by for the podium. If all the drivers could make their way down to the podium area, please. In fact, you could use Amanda Stretton as your podium uh, deliverer. <laughs> she could bring all the drivers over to us, because I'm gonna, really going to have to shout now, because they're all assembled. Joe, can I get you to turn around here? Look at this. It's like a Ferrari Challenge party going on in the pit lane, and the podium is here. So if you could make your way up towards the podium, uh, please, drivers, we would appreciate that very much. We are going to get the uh, Trofeo Pirelli podium underway uh, first and uh, foremost. And uh, thankfully the drivers are now, thanks to my friend Filippo Zania, who is uh, urging our drivers to come forward ready for the uh, podium. Of course, the first race of uh, Ferrari Challenge UK here in uh, 2024. And going on to uh, the Trofeo Pirelli podium first and foremost, and I can see our Trofeo Pirelli drivers deep in conversation. So I'm gonna shout really loud, taking P3 in Trofeo Pirelli, John Dillon. Now John will sprint to his podium place. Here he comes, well done John. Only in your own time, friend. <laughs> Get up there on step three of the podium for Trofeo Pirelli. Uh, taking P2, here comes Andrew Morrow. And then on the top step of our Ferrari Challenge UK podium here in Brands Hatch, a place he knows quite well, uh, the podium that is, it's Tom Fleming. Well done to uh, Tom. Up onto the top step of the podium, we're delighted to welcome our Ferrari ambassador here, Giancarlo Fisichella, to make the trophy presentations right now. And uh, Giancarlo will present, the, first of all, P3 trophy to John Dillon. P2 trophy goes to Andrew Morrow. And the P1 race winner's trophy, Tom Fleming. 
And, of course, we invite our Copa dealer here, H.R. Owen, to uh, form part of the podium as well, as is only right and to proper. As right now, we invite uh, head of uh, Pirelli Motorsport Manager, Lucio Vagani, uh, to make the uh, Pirelli presentation to uh, Tom Fleming. And... Uh, the uh, dealer award is, of course, going to be presented right now to uh, H.R. Owen by Giancarlo Fisichella. We invite all the uh, podium guys to get together for the picture, listen up. Of course, the uh, formal picture. What an absolute litany of talent we can see before us from Trofeo Pirelli. And Lucio Vagani's there as well. <laughs> Only joking, of course. Brilliant. Thank you, and uh, right now, guys, of course, you can celebrate. <coughs> I say, John Dillon, fleet of foot there. Uh, well done to our uh, uh, Pirelli drivers. <laughs> I think there was a bit of retribution there. <laughs> I'm just keeping an eye on things here and uh, making sure I'm kept out of the way. Right. Uh, Claudio then resets the uh, podium because, of course, uh, we had a fantastic race in uh, Copa Shell and we're going to celebrate that with our uh, Copa Shell podium. And uh, I think we're ready to go. P3 on his return to the Ferrari Challenge, it's Gary Redman. Well done, Gary. Delighted. Taking P2, it's uh, Darren Howell. Well done, Darren. And what a drive on the top step of the podium. Big it up for Robert Rees. So our Copa Shell drivers then, what a race. Well done to you all. Uh, delighted to welcome our Ferrari North Europe regional manager, Federico Pastorelli, here to make the trophy presentations. First of all, to Gary Redman. On his return to racing, you're welcome. We're great to see you back. Uh, the P2 trophy, of course, on his debut to Darren Howell. Great drive. And the P1 trophy to Robert Rees. And uh, we, of course, invite Dick Lovett Swindon uh, for the... Uh, Dealer Award also to be presented by Federico Pastorelli. And what a brilliant drive from uh, Robert and all our uh, Copa Shell drivers. Now, will you all get together for the uh, formal picture of your success, please? And hold your trophies as well. All up on the top step. <laughs> brilliant stuff from our uh, all our Ferrari Challenge drivers, well done to you all, but Copa Shell, what a race. And now time to celebrate. Well. No, 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 no. So, I tried very hard there to get out of the way of the champagne and Robert Reese spotted me and uh, that was the end of it. So from down here in the uh, very damp podium now, damp with champagne. Uh, let's go back to Jack and Adam. Great to see the podium for both classes, Trofeo Pirelli and uh, Copa Shell. So uh, car number 22, Gary Redman, he fought hard and valiantly throughout that race, but he just couldn't quite get there. Held on to third place come the end of the race. But what a brilliant opening day it has been to round one of Ferrari Challenge UK. We've got so much to look forward to tomorrow, a different track layout, potentially different conditions, and um, a lot more up in the air that will all be decided tomorrow here at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix layouts. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please do join us tomorrow for free practice two, qualifying two, and race two here at Brands Hatch. Bye-bye.